The beautiful thing is, cruising along the side of this gorgeous lake down here in San Diego, if I should have a problem and end up veering off down the hill, crashing into the water, this car will float and I won't have to do a James Bond underwater escape. Welcome to Strange Logic. I'm Jonathan Buckley. If you've ever been hit by a car or seen somebody who has, you've probably realised that it's not so much fun. However, if the car involved is made out of foam, all of a sudden that experience becomes a lot less painful. That's exactly why the Spira was born. <laughs> I'm here with Doug Ballard, Vice President of Spira, the foam car that was originally designed to compete in the X-Prize. Yeah, we actually the second prototype we ever made was for the Spira getting to the X-Prize. When we developed our first one, it was because uh, my brother was always kind of playing around with three-wheel vehicles. And we made a first prototype and he went in with his hands and he built basically a car out of foam. So tell us a little bit about what the X-Prize was. There was $10 million in prize money. They wanted vehicles to do 100 miles per gallon or 100 miles per gallon the equivalent. Yep. And we actually tied for second place in our category. Wow, excellent. Well, <laughs> there's a first time for everything and I've never quite had to steer a car or a motorcycle for that matter, in this particular fashion before. So this is the Spira. It's got a five kilowatt motor, approximately 70 miles of range, 60 miles an hour top speed. And I have to say, it's kind of a nice way to get around. When we first got into this, we were looking at ways to protect people and also protect the vehicle. Two of the things most people don't realize in vehicle accidents around the world is that half the people that are killed in them aren't inside the vehicle. They're actually bicyclists, pedestrians, and also motorcyclists. In North America, it's about 25%, but in Asia, it's like 90%. So right. that was the idea of foam, is that we put the airbags on the outside of the vehicle, not inside the vehicle. Okay. Is it the same kind of stuff that we pack our TVs in? Is that you just get that kind of foam and make a car out of it, is it? This is basically styrofoam on steroids. This is actually uh, polypropylene. Polypropylene is a foam that can be very easily recycled. So we're the only vehicle I know that's out there that's it's essentially all composite, all recyclable, all composite. Right. So that's another benefit for the environment. What about the person inside the vehicle? Are we making some kind of sacrifice in safety because we've adopted this foam car? One thing that came out of this is that because we have a lot of foam in front, also the way we designed it with this core board material, we have half the G-force loads in a crash. In a typical car crash, what happens is you don't usually have a head-on. It's usually an offset, like 30, 40%. If I have this core board front end covered with this foam, so what happens in a crash is that it hits the foam and it actually careens down the side. You'll hit and you'll get deflected off. We've got heated seats with a switch back there for those cold winter mornings. We've even got a reverse camera, a backup camera, just for when you're heading out of the driveway. You don't want to bump into a pedestrian, but then the car is made of foam, so you're not going to hurt them anyway. Tight turn, don't tip over, don't tip over, don't tip over. Bad. When it comes to a three-wheel configuration, we found that things can tend to be a little unstable when you have a single wheel in the front and the two wheels behind. A lot of other companies have reversed that. Why did you decide to go with the single front configuration? A lot of it was for simplicity of design. When we do this, you can see our vehicle, we try to make it with as few as parts as possible and light as possible and least complicated. We were in the X Prize and we had to do a 50 mile per hour swerve test and we passed it no problem. The control setup in this car is totally unique. I've never really driven anything like it. It's a steering column that's attached directly to the single front wheel, which has motorcycle controls, but not in a regular configuration, kind of pushed down into an upside down V configuration. It's basically a modified uh, handlebar. So you can imagine if you're have, riding a motorcycle, your hands like this. Yep. Now you basically just bring them to you and then it turns into a tiller type of steering. It makes things very simple. You twist the throttle to go forward, 
You have the buttons for your indicators, your headlights, your horn. You use a foot brake like a conventional vehicle. And what this car also has, a foot pedal accelerator as well. So I can choose whether or not I use my hand or my foot. So from what I understand, there's three versions available. We've got the five kilowatt hour behind us. Right. A 10 kilowatt hour. That's correct. That's also available. And then you also, a potential for a gas powered version? Yes, we have a gas powered version. Uh, it will be powered by a 150 cc fuel injection engine. So we expect that to be available later this year. And also it's a, at a lower price point. It's $7,000. And for the electric powered version, what are we looking at. The one behind us here, it will be starting at 9,000 for, you know, five kilowatt battery pack. Hold it. Hey. Oh, <laughs> I got the back end to step out a little bit there. It's super lightweight. You feel that as soon as you get in. It's like 520 pounds. You mentioned that you're able to actually lift it up. Right. Like, and you can essentially, if there's no room, park it on its rear wheels. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's like a ballerina. It'll go up on point. You know, you can imagine a place like New York City where this is parking is at a premium or yep. even in your own garage right now, a lot of people have a little bit extra space, but they don't have enough for a total spare, but you have to park it up at the very front. Not a problem. Your car actually floats, doesn't it? Right, our car will float. I mean, when we designed this, it was just sort of our fluke of engineering. Any thoughts of down the track perhaps putting a propeller on the back? We may do that. I mean, <laughs> actually, that was part of our patent. We put in, it can be made amphibious by simply doing that. Put in a small trolling motor in the back and, right. says, and go around to your favorite fishing hole. Well, aside from down here in San Diego, seeing yourself driving around in this Spira, when are we going to see other Spiras on the road in the United States? We're lining up dealers right now, so we expect later this summer we'll have the electric version and before the end of the year, we'll have that uh, dealers will have the gasoline version. So you might not be taking your styrofoam packaging and building a car anytime soon, but that's essentially what Spira have done. They've built a car that's much more pleasant to be hit by, made from recycled materials, it's much more efficient, and it's a lot of fun to drive. TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.